Hello, hello. Good evening, everybody. How are you today? Buenas noches. Good evening, Genaro. Good evening, Hazel. It's good to have you here, my dear participants. Okay, we're going to wait uh, for a couple of minutes for more people to join us. Vamos a esperar un par de minutitos, ¿verdad? Para que más compañeros se nos unan a la clase. Okay. Okay, very good. In honor to you that came so early, en honor a ustedes que han venido temprano, ¿verdad? We are going to start our class. Um, eh, continuing with yesterday class, eh, that was about likes and dislikes and about uh, food vocabulary, okay? So for today, we are going to continue with countable and uncountable nouns, which is part uh, of uh, yesterday continuing topic. So uh, for today, we are going to talk about countable nouns and uncountable nouns. Welcome, Evis. Thank you for coming to class. Okay, what's a countable noun? A countable noun uh, have a singular and plural form, okay? So for example, we have here uh, something that, you, that we can count like a tree. For example, we can count a tree, two trees. Uh, we can use singular verb or plural verb. For example, the book is old, the books are old. So when it's singular, only one thing I say is, but when I have more than one, I say are. For uncountable nouns, uh, those are things that we cannot count, okay? Have only one form, no plural. For example, butter is singular. We don't say butters, okay? It's not plural. So you say, always use a singular verb. For example, sugar is sweet, singular, is sweet. You cannot use a, a modifier like a an or a number before them. For example, you cannot say a rice. You say a rice only. You cannot say to rice. No, you say rice. You cannot say a bread or to bread. No, no, no. You say just bread. Okay, for uncountable nouns, um, they are often abstract ideas. For example, things that we cannot touch. For example, love. You can feel love, but you cannot touch love. Freedom, libertad. You cannot touch freedom. You can feel freedom, imagine freedom, live freedom, but not touch it. Education, luck, suerte, help, ayuda, beauty, belleza, music and thunder. So those are abstract ideas that become uncountable nouns. Okay, the other um, elements that become uncountable nouns are often made of small parts. For example, sugar. Sugar is made of a lot of small parts. It's just, uh, very tiny pieces of sugar. Rice is the same. Uh, you have to join a uh, hundreds and hundreds and thousands of small parts of rice to have a pound of rice. Salt, sand, flour, dirt, dust, traffic, grass, spaghetti. Okay, so this is made of a smaller part. Some food, uh, for example, when you cut some food into small parts, for example, bread, fish, cheese, chocolate. 
meat, bacon, food, and ham. This is uncountable nouns. Okay, also we have liquids and gases like water, milk, wine, oil, coffee, rain, soup, air, smoke, blood, juice, and fog. So in the case of water, milk, and wine, you need to uh, move them into a measure unit. En ese caso tenemos que moverlos a una unidad de medida. Por ejemplo, decir one glass of water, un vaso de agua. Ahí sí cuento el vaso, ¿verdad? One, uh, uh, let's say one uh, glass of milk or one cup of milk, okay? One bottle of wine, one bottle of oil, one uh, cup of coffee, okay? Uh, 100 millimeters of rain. Uh, let's say uh, like 10, uh, 10 cups of soup, for example, etc. Okay, so materials also, for example, wood, glass, paper, gold, silver, ice, iron, cotton, wool, steel. All those materials, we cannot count them, okay, because um, they are joined of uh, several other parts, like in the case of wood or silver or iron. Be careful, uncountable in English. Uh, for example, furniture is also uncountable. Advice, work, news, information, luggage and money. They are uncountable nouns also. So I would like to ask, do you have questions about this? Me gustaría preguntar, ¿tenemos preguntas acerca de cuáles son los nombres eh, que podemos contar, los que serían countable? ¿Y cuáles serían los uncountable? And if you have doubts, you can express it no matter if in Spanish. Y si tenemos dudas todavía, me lo pueden decir en español, ¿verdad? Si les cuesta un poquito todavía plantearlo en inglés. Porque sí es súper interesante que podamos estar claros todos en este tema. Do you have questions, preguntas? Okay, vamos a ver, let's see. Uh, I would like to ask, voy a pedirles un ejemplo a cada uno. Eh, ya dijimos que los countable nouns son aquellas cosas que yo puedo contar la, one by one, uno por uno, ¿verdad? La unidad. Y las uncountable son cosas que están hechas de ideas abstractas, pequeñas partes, eh, son también eh, piezas de comida, ¿verdad? Cortada en muchas partes, líquidos y gases, materiales, ¿verdad? Entonces, para poderlos contar, tenemos que moverlos a una unidad de medida, como un vaso, una taza, una libra, ¿verdad? Eh, so then, I would like to ask, uh, let's see. Genaro, do you have an example of countable noun and uncountable noun? ¿Nos puede dar un ejemplo, Genaro, de los, eh, de algo que sí podemos contar y algo que no? Eh, podemos contar eh, eh, un trozo de pan. Ok, uh, yes, the one slice of bread, eso es cierto. Pero eh, ahí sí ya lo puse en una unidad de medida, ¿verdad? Un trozo, one slice, excellent. Eh, let me see, other example. Hazen, I don't know. Thank you, Genaro. Okay. Genaro, I mean, uh, Hazel, um, do you have an example? Tenemos un ejemplo. No sé si nos escucha Hazel. Ok, vamos a ver. Let's see. Eh, Elena, Elenita Clemente, eh, do you have an idea or an example? El que usted quiera, countable or uncountable. No, no, no tengo, I don't have idea, teacher. Ok, vamos yeah. a ver. Don't pero, worry. pero, pero, eh, puede ser, no sé, un contable, ¿no? Eh, Las estrellas, teacher, no. 
Yes, uh, vamos a hacer, vamos a ver el ejemplo. Thank you, Elenita. The sky. Eh, in the sky we have many elements. En el cielo tenemos muchos elementos. Podemos hablar acerca de the galaxy, right? And all the uh -huh. elements. But you can say eh, one star, two stars. Las estrellas sí podríamos contarlas, pero son una gran inmensidad, ¿verdad? Necesitaríamos mucho tiempo. Eh, pero pensemos en algo como un poquito, vamos a ver. Eh, pensemos... The air, for example, el, el aire, por ejemplo. The air, the air of, the, uh, of the atmosphere, el aire de la atmósfera, ese sí de verdad que no lo podemos contar, ¿verdad? Entonces, the sunshine. The, the sunshine, el, el brillo del no, sol. Eh, sun. The sun, eh, eh, sí, la arena, the sun. Uh -huh. And also the sun, the sun rays, los rayos de sol también, ¿verdad? We cannot count them, no los podemos contar. Yeah, that's right. Thank you, Elenita. You gave us some good elements. Elena nos dio algunos elementos, ¿verdad? Al plantearnos las estrellas. Ok, very good. Um, so that's the idea. Esa es la idea, ¿verdad? De que podamos identificar qué es countable and uncountable. Ok, let's continue. Continuemos. So here I have more uh, examples. Uh, nouns, countable nouns are nouns you can count. You can use a an in front of countable nouns. For example, a book, an envelope. Esas sí son cosas que las podemos contar. A book, eh, I can, I can eh, touch the book, the, the book and I can separate. Okay, so that's a single element. Like a cell phone, okay. An envelope, un sobre. Nouns that have a plural, for example, three sausages. La salchicha, ¿verdad? Three sausages. I can count. One, two, three. ¿Verdad? Las puedo contar uno por uno el elemento. Excuse me. But eh, I have some other examples of uncountable. Those are nouns that you cannot count. No los podemos contar. Normally you can use a on in front of uncountable nouns. Normalmente no podemos utilizar, ¿verdad? La, el, el quantifier o la expresión a an, uno, una, ¿verdad? No podemos porque no los podemos contar. Y a an significa uno, una. For example, I say beef is expensive, ¿verdad? Eh, en este caso, la carne de red, ¿verdad? Beef, beef is expensive. Eh, nouns that normally don't have a plural form. Nombres que no tienen un, un, un plural, ¿verdad? O sustantivos que no tienen un plural. For example, I want roasted beef. Quiero carne rostizada, ¿verdad? Roasted beef. So they don't have a plural form. Ok, here I have more examples. Talking about food, we can say countables. I can say a bun. Even though it's made of uh, different elements, we have a bun, a sandwich, vea. Aunque el sandwich tiene muchos elementos, pero puedo contarlo como uno solo, de manera, de manera integral. A sandwich, an apple, an orange, a burger, a fries, ¿verdad? A, um, order of fries, ¿verdad? Una orden de papitas. Eggs, salad, vegetables, cookies. Potatoes. Uh, I can say uh, seven vegetables. Uh, let's say one, two, three, four, five, six cookies. Two potatoes. One tomato. One carrot. One hot dog. Uh, three or four candies. Two olives. Uh, ten peanuts. One pancake. One onion. Uh, one watermelon. Uh, or two pieces of watermelon. Uh, one pea. Uh, full of grains, uh, grapes, right? We can say one uh, grape, two grapes, three grapes, and so on. And one cherry, two cherries, three cherries, and so on. So all of them, we can count them. Los podemos separar por unidad y los podemos contar, ¿verdad? But the uncountable are, for example, bread. You already told me, one slice of bread, and that's right. ¿Verdad? Podemos decir una rebanada, one slice. But in general, bread is uncountable. Fruit. Vea que para contarla, eh, no lo puedo hacer con el término fruta, sino que si lo separo y digo one apple, one pear, 
en three bananas, ahí sí, ahí sí se vuelven countable. But if you have like a cocktail of fruit, si usted tiene un cóctel de frutas and you cannot count the pieces y no puede contar las piezas, entonces es uncountable, fruit. I would like, so, I would like to have some fruit uh, for my lunch, fruit, uncountable. Juice. You cannot count the juice unless you add like one glass of juice or 10 ounces of juice or one bottle of juice. Okay, meat. You cannot count meat unless you say one pound of meat. Okay, no podemos contarla a menos que la pongamos en libra, ¿verdad? Estos son los resultados Rice, principales. cereal, um, jam, milk, coffee, sugar, flour. Uh, this is olive oil, for example, salt, soup, tea, cottage cheese, pasta, honey, water, cheese, butter, seafood, mustard. All of them are uncountable nouns. No los podemos contar, ¿verdad? Pieza por pieza, sino que, por ejemplo, el mustard yo lo tengo que llevar a la unidad de medida de one bottle of mustard. Uh, for example, the butter, also I can say one pound of butter, yeah? Cheese, I can say one slice of cheese or two slices of cheese, like in the case of the bread. But uh, I need to put them into a measure. Tengo que ponerlo en una medida para poder contar la medida, ¿verdad? No el elemento como tal. Okay, here again, uh, we have already started this, but I want just to remind you. Uh, and plus a singular countable noun. There is a bottle on the table. There is an apple on the table. Look, we use a plus consonant, uh, plus consonant sound when the next word starts with a consonant sound, like in bottle. There is a bottle on the table. But I use an when we have a, a vowel sound. Uh, next, for example, there is an apple. Okay, vowel sound. So I, don't, I cannot say there is an apple. I say there is an apple on the table. And remember, we already studied this. Esto ya lo habíamos visto, but it's important for you just to uh, remind, para que se recuerden, ¿verdad? Some, we use some for affirmative sentences. For example, there is some cheese in the fridge. Hay algo de queso en el refrigerador. Any plus plural countable nouns and uncountable noun. Any for negatives. There isn't any cheese in the fridge. No hay eh, queso en el refrigerador, ¿verdad? Oh, no hay nada de queso en el refrigerador. Questions eh, with any. También any nos sirve para preguntas. Is there any cheese in the fridge? ¿Hay algo de queso en el refrigerador? Ok, remember that a uh, an can be used for three. Eh, a an lo podemos utilizar en las tres formas, ¿verdad? Affirmative, negative, and questions. And eh, we have eh, the plural, countable plural, we say some, any, for some for affirmative, any for negative, and any for questions. And it can work for countable plural and uncountable. Podemos utilizarlo para nombres contables en plural y también para los no contables, ¿verdad? Ya dijimos que los no contables no tienen plural, todos son singular. The exceptions to the rule with some, las excepciones a la regla en el caso de some, it's only when you offer something. Would you like some coffee? Can I ask uh, for some tea? When you ask for. Or when you suggest, why don't we eat some fruit? For example, I'm suggesting. Okay, that's the only exception to the rule. Now, this, this exercise is for you. Say if the nouns are countable or uncountable, or both. Okay, so beef, for example, is countable or uncountable? Vamos a ver, volunteers. Vamos a ver, chicos. Uncountable. Uncountable, yes, because you, you cannot measure unless you have uh, in towns. Porque no la podemos contar a menos que la pongamos en libra, ¿verdad? Beef. Coffee. 
Uncountable. Uncountable. Yes. Uncountable. Uncountable. Yes. Uncountable. You need to say one cup of coffee, one pound of coffee, or whatever. Peach. Let's see. Peach. Countable. 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 Yes, because you can count one peach, two peaches, three peaches, four peaches, etc. Onion. Onion. Let's see. What about the onion? Vamos a ver. Countable. Countable. La cebolla, ¿verdad? One onion, two onion, three onion, four onion. Okay. Sugar. Let's see. Sugar? What do you mean? Uncountable. Uncountable. You need to put into pounds, right? Because they are two small pieces. Son demasiado pequeñitas las piezas, ¿verdad? Strawberry. Do you think it's countable or uncountable? What do you think about strawberry? Las fresas. Strawberry. Countable. 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 You can count. One strawberry, two, three, four, and so on. T. Countable or uncountable? Uncountable. 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 Yes. And what about the pork? Countable. Mm, depends. Countable. It can be both. Yes. Fíjense que esto puede ser ambas, pero cuando lo tenemos, en, cuando tenemos como el, comida, no. Sí, como comida, no. Pork. Exactamente. Cuando lo tenemos el pork, como en el caso de beef, ya la comidita servida, ahí sí es incountable. ¿Verdad? Pero cuando hablamos del animalito, del chanchito, del marranito, de, del pork que está vivo, entonces ahí sí, hay que hacer one pork, two porks, three porks, four porks. ¿Ok? Ese puede ser ambos, ¿verdad? Ok, pair. Countable. Countable, yes. You can say one, two, three, four. Okay, jam. La mermelada, la jalea, jam. Countable. Uncountable. 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 A menos que la midamos en pounds or jars o jarra, ¿verdad? Okay, a cup of tea. Is countable or uncountable? Countable. 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 Ahí sí lo estoy midiendo en tazas. Ahí sí ya puedo contar, ¿verdad? One cup of tea, two cups of tea, three cups of tea. Ok. A glass of milk. Countable. Countable. Ahí sí ya lo estoy midiendo en vaso, ¿verdad? One glass of milk, two glasses of milk, three glasses of milk. Ok. Melon. Countable. Countable. One melon, two melons, three melons. Okay, bread. What about bread? Countable? Uncountable. 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 Because I have to cut them into pieces and say one slice, two slices, three slices. Okay, milk. Countable or uncountable? Uncountable. 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 Yes, you need to measure in glasses or, uh, or uh, let's say, balloons. Okay, butter. Countable or uncountable? Uncountable. 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 Yes, because you need to measure into pounds in order to count. Okay, excellent. Now, I'm going to mute all of you. Lo voy a poner en mute, chicos, para evitar un poquito el sonido y explicar el siguiente ejercicio. Thank you very much for your participation in the previous one. Gracias por su participación en el ejercicio anterior. Okay, now is your turn. It says, fill in the gaps with a, an, or some. Can I have biscuits and glass of milk, please? ¿Con qué lo vamos a, a, a completar? Con a, an, or some, with the modifiers. Eso se llaman modifiers. I'd like sausages and eggs, please. I want cheese and ham sandwich today. Would you like apple or pear? I want chocolate ice cream with my fruit salad. I'd like steak, rice, and green salad. Do you want chips with your chicken? Would you like strawberries or grapes? I'd like egg and cereals for breakfast. Can I have milk or juice, please? Would you like beer or would you prefer a glass of wine? Would you like wine and cheese too? I want jam and butter uh, for my toast, please. 
Uh, do you want sausages or would you prefer a steak or steak? Okay, let me um, send you the image. If you can have a screenshot, it's going to be okay. Déjenme mandarles la imagen. Si usted puede sacarle una mejor de la que yo le mande, it's going to be excellent. Okay, I'm going to share with you now. And I will invite you to go to the breakout rooms in order to... Uh, let's see. Okay. Yeah in order that you can practice. So this is your practice, this is your chance to practice. Este es tu, su espacio para practicar. So do you have questions so far about the exercise? Tenemos preguntas acerca del ejercicio? Okay, let's see. ¿Qué vamos a hacer ahí en ese, en esa, vamos en ese a Vamos a completar los espacios con los modificadores a, and, some. Recuerden mm. que a, an es uno, una. Utilizamos a cuando la siguiente palabra tiene un sonido de eh, consonante. Pero utilizamos an, eh, perdón, cuando tiene un sonido de, vo de vocal. Por ejemplo, eh, a, a banana. Eh, ahí no hay problema, perdón, de consonante. Can, consonant. Pero si yo digo an apple, no puedo decir a apple. Porque el siguiente sonido es una vowel, es una vocal, entonces suena cacófono. Entonces yo digo an apple, pero ambos, a y an, significa un uno. Entonces yo digo a banana porque el siguiente sonido es una eh, consona, pero digo an apple porque el siguiente sonido es una vowel. Um, in the case of, of some, it means unos, unas, algunos, algunas. Okay, do you have questions so far? Yes, teacher. Okay, so let me create the rooms and invite you. Please join. This is your chance for practicing. Okay, please join. Okay, uh, David, do you have a problem joining? Hazel and Maritza, do you have a problem joining? Si no, con gusto les muevo de grupo, ¿verdad? Si tienen dificultades. Perdón, teacher, creí que lo íbamos a hacer solo. No, 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 no. Eh, ahí tiene que haberle llegado ya la invitación, David. Sí, sí, me estaba viendo la, la imagen y me había salido don't de su. De que lo íbamos a hacer solo. No, no, no. Eh, Mándeme la invitación. Yeah, I already, uh, would you like to check? Le gustaría chequear porque ya se la, man, ya se la mandé, David. No le ha llegado. Ok. Pienso que son, porque está hablando oh, de... Uh -huh. Visual, y, uh -huh. ajá. Y el otro está hablando de un vaso de leche. De leche, son. Ah, a glass, a glass, un vaso. A glass, de leche. ok. En la otra igual, I like some social, social heads, porque son unas salchichas y uh -huh. some eggs también. Sausages, chicos. Sausages. Sausages. Okay. Yeah, okay. Sausages. Excellent. Very good. I'll call you back in a minute. Regreso un minutito con ustedes. Uh, do you have okay. questions? Preguntas hasta acá? Is everything? Uh, no, yo creo que no. no teacher, okay. Excellent. Momento. Perfect. See you in a minute. Hello, Hazel and Maritza. If you have difficulties uh, with your connection, you can work here. Si ustedes prefieren permanecer acá, ¿verdad? Por alguna dificultad con su conexión, that's okay. Estamos bien. You can eh, talk each other or you can use the chat. Pueden utilizar el chat, ¿verdad? 
paso es. Entonces sería A, A también. Ok. Very good. Can, can I have a biscuit and a glass of milk, please? Hello, may I help you? ¿Puedo ayudarles, chicos? Vean que bi biscuit está plural, tiene una S. Entonces utilizo A, A, O, ya. Can I have some biscuit and a glass of milk? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you, you it, it, it's like it, the case of sausages. So you you need to look for the if it's in singular or plural. Oh, and okay. if plural, you say some. Some. Mm -hmm. Yes. If it's more than okay. one, it means plural. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank Excellent. You. You're welcome. Okay. And Um, some, some else, some, some. también, some. Sí, porque, porque ya son está un huevo. Else. Ya está, ya está frito, ya está cocinado. Mm -hmm. Son else. Hello, may I help you? Hola, ¿puedo ayudar? <laughs> Do no. You <laughs> Do you have questions? Preguntas? Y, sí, estábamos comentando ahí con la compañera. Eh, Dice que ella que son salchichas, sandwich. Sausages. 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 Yes, Sausages. the letter B, yes. Uh, a, clue, okay. a clue that I would like to give you is that you look for uh, the way it is written. Eh, quiero darles la clave en relación a cómo está escrito. For, for example, letter A says biscuits. So it's plural. And letter mm -hmm. B says sausages. It's plural. So you have, can I, you say, Can I have some biscuits and a glass of milk? ¿Por qué utilizo some? Porque biscuits, plural. Like in letter B. I say, I'd like some sausages and eggs, please. And some eggs, please. In a letter B, ambos es some. Porque sausages está plural. Y eggs Alex, también está plural. Está plural. Ajá. En el caso de la que estaban ustedes haciendo... Que dice, I like egg, letter I. I like egg and cereals for breakfast. Entonces digo, I like an egg. ¿Por qué an? Porque el egg comienza con es, vowel sound, con sonido de vocal. Entonces yo digo, I like an egg and eh, some cereals. Cereals plural. So I use some. Some cereals for breakfast. I don't know if it guides you. Eh, ¿Les guía un poco eso? Son para plural, ¿verdad? Y a mm -hmm. para singular. Ok. Ok, excellent. Sí, la miniatura. Ok. Uh, let us see. Eight. Uh, what do you like? Um, H -H. Would you like some tennis or whatever? Quieres uvas o, perdón, quieres fresas, ambuesas o uvas? Oh, right. Do you, what do you like? Mm -hmm. Aquí sería. A uno, a unas. An y an. Quiero ver, quiero ver. La ley, la que decía era consonante. Empieza con consonante, va N, ¿no? Que sea a N. ¿Qué sería A? Uh -huh. What do you like a strawberries or a grape? Ok, a grape. A grape. Eh, eh, may I help you? Uh, I would like that you can notice that strawberries is written in plural form. Sí, solo me gustaría que notaran que strawberries está escrito de manera plural. Sí. Some. 
Ajá, es some. Entonces, todas las que encuentren en plural es some. Y todas las que encuentren en singular es a an. With the exception of those that start with a vowel sound. Eh, solo aquellas que comienzan con sonido de vocal, por ejemplo, el. I cannot say a, a el porque se oye un poco cacófono. Entonces yo digo an egg. Yes. An egg. Okay. Yes. Ok, very good. Yes. Thank you, teacher. Eh, si es plural, digo some eggs. Pero si no es plural, entonces digo an egg. Ok. Ok. Excellent. Mm -hmm. See you in a couple of minutes. Okay, my dears, people is coming back from the practice. So now we are going to start sharing how was the answer. So let me just take a look on how it is. And I would like to have some volunteers. Okay, let's start. Uh, who would like to solve number uh, letter A? ¿A quién le gustaría resolver la letra A? Can I have biscuits and glass of milk, please? So how did you answer? ¿Cómo respondieron? Can I, can I have some biscuits and a glass of milk, please? Okay, can I have some biscuits? Again, I will write in uh, capitals only for more view purposes. Voy a escribir en, en mayúsculas solamente para que ustedes puedan verlo mejor, ¿verdad? Pero ustedes saben que no se mezclan mayúsculas con minúsculas. No capitals in the middle of, eh, mixed with eh, small letters. Ok, I can, can I have some biscuits and a glass of milk, please? Ok, very good, thank you, excellent. Let's see, uh, letter B, who answered letter B? ¿Quién contestó la letra B? I like some. Mm -hmm. I'd like some sausages and some eggs. And some eggs. Yes, because we have plural eggs. Okay. Excellent. Very good. Okay. Letter C. What do you think? I want some cheese. Yes, I want some cheese and ham sandwich uh, today. Okay, let's see. Letter D. Would you like an apple? Okay, would you like, let's see. Would you like an apple or a pear? Okay, or a pear. Or a pear. Okay, let's say an apple and a pear. Okay, now a letter E. I want a chocolate. A chocolate. A chocolate ice cream with my fruit salad. Okay, very good. Okay, letter F. I like some stick. Mm. A steak, in that case. Como ahí sí puedo contar cuánto bistec, ¿verdad? Entonces yo digo a steak. Ajá. Eh, some. Some rice. Yes, some rice. Very good. Ok. okay some rice. Ah. And a. A green. Ah, ya se lo dije. Lo siento, se me salió. <laughs> <laughs> It's funny. 
espacio de arte en Green Salad. <laughs> ok, number, I mean, letter G. Do you want chips with some. your Yes, would you like some chips with your chicken? Ok, let's see. Uh, vamos a ver. Uh, would you like strawberries or grapes? Some strawberries. Some, yes, strawberries. would you like some strawberries or some grapes? Because it's plural also, ¿verdad? También está en plural. Ok, uh, letter E. Uh, I, I mean. Uh, I'd like... Um, um. A or an? An. An, ¿verdad? Porque comienza con vowel. Very good. I like an egg and some cereals. Some cereals, because it's plural. Okay. And some cereals for breakfast. Uh, can I have some milk? Yes, some milk. No. Or or some juice. Some juice, yes. Porque no estamos midiéndolo en, en... Aunque está singular, pero no lo hemos medido en vaso, ¿verdad? Ni nada de eso. Entonces decimos, can I have some milk or some juice, please? Ok, very good. Uh, would you like beer or would you prefer glass of wine? Yeah, thank you. A beer, ¿verdad? Ok, would you like a beer or would you prefer a glass? Por ahí tenemos una interferencia. Ok, uh, would you like a beer or would you prefer a glass of wine? Eh, ok, ahí sí, a glass of, porque estamos midiéndolo en vaso, ¿verdad? Would you like? ¿Cómo? Some. Ah, ahí no lo estamos midiendo, ¿verdad? Entonces decimos some. Would you like some wine? Algo de vino. And some cheese. Some cheese. Some también, cheese. ¿Verdad? No lo estamos. Es un countable. Entonces decimos some. Ok. I want jam and Butter for my toast, please. I want some. Some, ¿verdad? En ambos casos, porque aunque se ve que está como singular, pero eh, no, es un uncountable. Entonces, eh, con uncountable, eh, utilizamos también, ¿verdad? I want some jam and some butter for my toast. Do you want... Some. Some sausages. Some sausages. Ahí eh, es plural, ¿verdad? Entonces también podemos usar el some. Some sausages or would you prefer um, steak? A steak. A steak, ¿verdad? Porque eso sí lo podemos contar. Uno. Ok. Um, is it clear? Or is it a little bit confusing? Uh, I have a question. Yeah, please. In the letter C. Letter C, okay. Is some or is a cheese? Some cheese. Algo de queso. Porque ah. hubiese sido a, si yo hubiera dicho a slice of cheese. Una rodajita de queso. Ahí sí es a, a slice of cheese. Pero como está sin medirlo, sin pasarlo a una unidad de medida, entonces algo de queso, ¿verdad? Some cheese. Okay. Uh -huh. eh, entonces, yo creo que lo estaba traduciendo mal, porque se, según yo decía que si quería un sándwich de queso y jamón, hoy. Ah, no, dice, I want some cheese and ham eh, sandwich today. Es que ese ham, dice, yo quiero algo de queso y eh, I want, ah, perdón, sí. I want a cheese and ham. Es que está hablando del sándwich, tiene razón. Yo lo leí, I want cheese and ham for my sandwich today. Pero no, 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 tiene razón. Es A, 
Porque en este caso la A no es para el cheese, ni es para el ham, es para el sándwich. I want a cheese and ham sandwich today. That's right. Es cierto, en ese caso cambia. Pero si yo hubiera dicho así, I want some cheese and ham for my sandwich today, ahí sí. Porque era como quiero las piezas para armarlo yo, ¿verdad? Quiero algo de queso y algo de jamón para mi sándwich de hoy. Yo lo voy a armar el sándwich. Ahí sí hubiese sido some. Pero como me hacen falta esos dos complementos como for my, entonces ahí sí, porque la A está modificando sandwich, no cheese and ham. That's right. Ahí sí. Ok, do we have any other? ¿Tenemos otra pregunta o duda de cómo quedó resuelto? Creería yo que estamos, ¿verdad? That's it. Ok, ¿por qué dirán ustedes, teacher, son, usted dice que es para plural, pero lo usa a veces en singular? Eh, as, if we go to the rule, quiero volver al cuadrito, ¿verdad? Para que eh, despejemos cualquier duda que pueda haber quedado. Remember that some can be used for plural uh, countable. Vean, esta es la respuesta. Or for uncountable. Some tiene la versatilidad que se puede utilizar para nombres plurales contables. Cuando yo les decía, ah, pero va en plural. Es por eso, porque es contable plural. ¿Verdad? Pero también se puede utilizar en uncountable. Aquí en el countable plural es algunos, algunas. Pero en el uncountable es algo, ¿verdad? Algo. Y eh, recordar, just to remind you that eh, any lo utilizamos eh, normalmente solo para, eh, en este caso, ¿verdad? Eh, lo utilizamos para negatives y para questions. Pero también lo podemos usar para plural countable. ¿Y cómo sería ahí? Eh, nada, ¿verdad? O algo, ¿verdad? Eh, puede tomar el rol de nada o de algo. Eh, y también lo podemos usar eh, con plural countable eh, y con uncountable. Pero normalmente el en y la diferencia es que lo usamos en negatives y en questions only. Not for affirmative. No lo utilizamos para afirmativa. For example, here there isn't any cheese in the fridge. No hay nada de queso en el refrigerador. Eh, aquí está como eh, negativo, ¿verdad? Pero en pregunta, ¿Is there any cheese in the fridge? ¿Hay algo de queso en el refrigerador? ¿Vean? De ser ninguno, eh, nada a algo, ¿verdad? Puede tomar ambas formas. Eh, nada de o eh, ninguno en los negativos y eh, algo en eh, positive o affirmative. Ok, I don't know if it clarifies, no sé si eso clarifica, ¿verdad? Porque, por ejemplo, hemos usado son para biscuits, ah, plural, pero biscuits yo lo puedo contar, ¿verdad? Entonces, ese es un plural countable. Eh, también los sausages, I can count them, las puedo contar, one, two, three. Eh, eggs, I can count the eggs, puedo contar los huevos. Pero en el caso de rice, some rice. Ah, entonces ahí ya no, es, es, ahí estoy diciendo algo de arroz. Ya no estoy diciendo algunos, algunas, sino algo de arroz, ¿verdad? Igual que, eh, bueno, en el caso de chips, ahí sí es plural y las puedo contar. One chip, two chip, three chips. Eh, igual en strawberries, es un plural countable. I can count them, las puedo contar. Grapes, I can count them, también las puedo contar. One, two, three, four, five. But cereals, uh, also I can count, eh, puedo contar, eh, let's say some juice, ahí sí, no lo puedo contar porque no está en vaso o en bottle, ¿verdad? Entonces queda como algo de juice, algo de jugo, and some milk, algo de leche. Ok, do we have questions so far? ¿Tenemos preguntas en relación a some? No, teacher. Okay. No, excellent. Okay, excellent. So let me uh, just start the next topic. Eh, vamos a dejar iniciado, ¿verdad? We are going to start the next topic, which is 4.7 that says, 
By the end of this class, you will learn how to use adverbs of frequency when talking about food. Uh, at the, okay, that's at, at the end uh, of the class, you will uh, use uh, frequency adverbs. So I just will show you what we have uh, of materials and some examples. And then tomorrow we are going to continue with the practice and the conversations related to adverbs of frequency. So in the platform, basically you have this video that talks about some uh, adverbs and the, frequent, and, and the meaning of frequency or the um, implications they have in the frequency. For example, always, usually, often, sometimes, hardly ever, never, okay? So let me just go back and then you can participate also in the discussion forum. And at the end, you answer the 4.9, excuse me, knowledge check. So tomorrow we are going to solve this knowledge check together. So for today, I'm going to stop sharing and I will start uh, saying that we have these frequency adverbs and I have this inverted pyramid that says that an adverb of frequency tell us how often something takes place. Remember that an adverb modifies a verb. Recuerden que un adverbio siempre modifica un verbo. ¿verdad? Entonces antes de hablar de las frequency, de las frecuencias, vamos a ver. All, all the words that are underlined here are adverbs. Todas las palabras que están subrayadas acá son adverbios. And normally, they are modifying a verb. Y normalmente están modificando al verbo que es la siguiente palabra que aparece. For example, always wake up. Wake up is a two-word verb. Este es un verbo de dos palabras que significa levantarse, ¿verdad? Usually come. Venir, ¿verdad? O regresar. Eh, I normally, en este caso es venir. I normally swim, nadar. Normalmente, nado. Often spend, a menudo paso. En este caso, spend is a verb that can have different meanings. Spend es un verbo que puede tomar el significado de spend money. Cuando hablamos de money, es gastar dinero. Spend money. But when we talk about time or in a specific season, we are saying pasar con. ¿Verdad? For example, I spend my vacation with friends. Paso mi vacación con amigos. Or I spend Christmas with my family. Paso la Navidad con mi familia. Entonces eso es pasar tiempo. Okay, sometimes play. Sometimes is modifying the verb play. Occasionally eat. In this case, occasionally is modifying the verb eat. Seldom go. Seldom is modifying the verb go. Rarely listen. Rarely is modifying the verb listen. Never listen. Never is modifying the word listen. Okay? So, but regarding to the question, how often? Los adverbios de frecuencia nos ayudan a responder la pregunta, how often? ¿Qué tan a menudo? O con qué frecuencia, verdad? So, I can say that when I use the frequency adverb always is because I'm 100% sure that this will happen. Cuando yo utilizo siempre es porque hay un 100% de certeza que eso va a ocurrir. Usually, 90%. Normally or generally, they are synonyms, is 80%. Often or frequently is 70%. Eh, 50% sometimes. 30% occasionally. 10% seldom. 5% rarely and 0% never. I always wake up at six o'clock. I usually come home after work. I normally swim after school. I often spend Christmas with friends. I sometimes play tennis on the weekend. I occasionally eat Vietnamese food. I seldom go to the library. I rarely listen to the radio. I never listen to rock music. Okay, so normally when we use frequency adverbs, we are talking about daily routines. Normalmente los adverbios de frecuencia se utilizan en presente, ¿verdad? 
y eh, nos hablan acerca de ciertas rutinas o habits, habits we have, o hábitos, ¿verdad? Que tenemos. Por ejemplo, I always wake up at six o'clock. This is a routine. Ese es un hábito, una rutina, ¿verdad? Siempre me levanto a las seis en punto. Or I usually come home after work. O siempre regreso a casa eh, después del trabajo. O llego a casa después del trabajo. So that's a routine. Daily routine. Una rutina diaria, ¿verdad? I normally swim after school. After school. So that's a daily routine. I often spend Christmas with friends. This is uh, like a routine. I sometimes play tennis on the weekend. Also, it's like a routine. And occasionally eat Vietnamese food. Not a lot of routine, but it can be uh, like a habit, okay? I seldom go to the library. It's like a routine. Uh, not so common, but do it. Okay, and, and that's the way they, they are used for. So, uh, here I have another chart. Aquí tenemos otro cuadrito, ¿verdad? That illustrates with different uh, examples. 100% always. I always study after class. 90% usually. I usually walk to work. 80% normally or generally. I normally get good marks. Obtener buenas notas, ¿verdad? 70%. Often or frequently. I often read in bed at night. 50% sometimes. I sometimes sing in the shower. 30% occasionally. I occasionally go to bed late. Seldom, 10%. I seldom put salt on my food. Entonces aquí estamos hablando de que no es como un hábito, más bien es un hábito no ponerle, ¿verdad? Lo opuesto, sale la comida. Entonces, ¿por qué it's not so frequent? No es tan frecuente to put salt on my food. Hardly ever, it's a synonym of, ra of rarely. I hardly ever get angry. And zero percent possibilities, never. Vegetarians never eat meat. So the structure here is subject plus adverb plus main verb. Look, I hardly ever, este es un two word verb a frequency, es un adverbio de dos palabras, hardly ever. Then the main verb, get angry, the complement. But also I can have subject plus be plus adverb. Vea que la estructura me cambia cuando yo estoy utilizando el verbo be. Aquí el adverbio va hasta el final. Solamente cuando estoy utilizando el verbo be, el adverbio va al final. Eh, porque la fórmula es subject plus be plus adverb. He is always happy. No podemos decir he always is happy. No, he is. Decimos he is always happy. Eh, that's the way it is. He, subject, is, be, and then the adverb, always. Eh, let's say, again, eh, the, last, the last example. Eh, the frequency 100% always. I always go to bed before 11 p.m. 90% usually. I usually have cereal for breakfast. 80% normally or generally, I normally go to the gym. 70% often or frequently, often, I often surf the internet. 50% sometimes, I sometimes forget my wife's birthday. 30% occasionally, I occasionally eat junk food. 10% seldom, I seldom read newspapers. 5% hardly ever, I hardly ever drink alcohol. 30% never. I never swim in the sea. Ok, I will send you this picture. Le voy a enviar esta imagen y les pediría si para mañana, in order to go back to food vocabulary, para seguir practicando el vocabulario de la comida, if you can give me at least two examples, si cada uno puede traer un ejemplo, eh, of some food that you always eat, tal vez de alguna comida que you always, usually, or normally eat de una comida que usted come siempre, usualmente o normalmente, or eh, other types of food that you say, I seldom, or hardly ever or never. 
que yo rara vez, casi nunca y nunca como, ¿verdad? Uh, just to give us an example of your likes and dislikes, para continuar hablando de lo que nos gusta, lo que no. But in this case, to talk about the frequency. Pero en este caso, hablando de la frecuencia, ¿verdad? ¿Con qué frecuencia? How often do I eat that meal? ¿Qué tan a menudo yo consumo esa comida? Ok, do you have questions so far? ¿Tenemos preguntas hasta acá? No, teacher. Ok, my dear participant, thank you very much for coming. I appreciate that. Please be safe and I hope to see you tomorrow here, ok? Bye bye. Good night, Thank you, teacher. Good night. Good night. Good night. See you tomorrow. Bye bye.